For this example here, I'm going to use the technique of completing the square to go ahead and solve the quadratic, x squared plus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Now completing the square is a great technique to use to solve quadratics, and it's particularly helpful when the coefficients are even, because one of the first things we do is take them, take one of them in particular, and divide by 2. If that number is even, that works out great. When it's odd, it doesn't work out so well, but we can still do it. And you notice here, that's the case we have. This number, 5, is odd. That means we're going to have to divide it by 2, and we end up with fractions. So yes, though there are fractions involved in solving this problem, I swear they actually go out of their way to be as user-friendly as possible. Now before we get into doing that, let's first set this problem up to work well. Well, you'll look here, x squared plus 5x minus 3, perfectly fine quadratic, but we can't factor it. And it is not a perfect square, which is what we want it to ultimately be. So to get it to be there, we're going to get rid of this negative 3 right here. Since I'm not allowed to just randomly cross things out, to get rid of it, I'm going to go ahead and add it to both sides. That way, it's just not where it is now. I want it out of my way. I want it off the side of the equation. This gives me now x squared plus 5x equals 3. And you notice I've left myself a nice big open break here. That's so that I can fill in the number I want to make this left-hand side a perfect square, something that factors nice and easily. To find what that number is, what we're going to do is take this middle coefficient, the 5, and divide it by 2. And as I warned you earlier, since 5 is odd, we end up with the fraction 5 over 2. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a perfectly fine number. In fact, we don't want to simplify it any more than that. You don't want decimals because the fraction is easier to deal with than the decimal, or definitely easier to deal with than the mixed number. So we're going to leave it this improper fraction. That number is not what we want to add to both sides, but it's very important, which is why I switched colors and made it green here, because we are going to use it in just a second. So though it's not what we're adding to both sides, we do want to keep track of it. What we want to do to figure out what we're adding to both sides, though, is to go ahead and actually take this and square it. So 5 over 2 squared. Squaring a fraction means square the top, square the bottom, so instead of squaring one number, we're squaring two. That's going to give me 25 over 4. That's the number I want to add to both sides. So you'll notice I will add that here. And I will go ahead and add it here. Now, we have set all of this up so this left-hand side factors to be a perfect square. And you don't need to panic about trying to factor anything with fractions in it because we know exactly what it's going to be every single time. It's going to be the first term, x, and the second term is going to be whatever this number was that you had right here. We had 5 over 2, so that's what it's going to be. So this becomes x plus 5 over 2. Remember when I said that that number was not what we were going to add to both sides, but it was important because we used it in a second? That's where we use it. So our left-hand side factors to be x plus 5 over 2 squared, that whole thing squared. Now we got to deal with the fractions on this side. Well, we are going to have to simplify, and we do have two fractions. You notice we have them right here, 3 and 25 over 4. Well, to deal with this, make sure I have my pen here. To deal with this, we're going to recognize that 3 is really the same as 3 over 1. And here's the first case of where I said, though fractions happen, they do everything they can to be as nice and easy as possible. Because we need a common denominator here, but one of them that we have is 1. That's the easiest number to work with. So our common denominator is going to be 4. We're just going to take this first fraction and multiply it, top and bottom, by 4, which is going to give us 12 over 4 plus 25 over 4. So as I mentioned, fractions do happen, but they actually become pretty easy to handle, meaning that they do everything they can to be as simple as possible. 
So this is the equation that we now have to simplify. We're going to go ahead and do that. Well, here we still have x plus 5 over 2, that quantity squared, equal to, well, now we can go ahead and just add the fractions. Since they have a common denominator, we're going to end up with the top being 12 plus 25, which is 37, over the common denominator, 4. Now you notice that we have a quantity, this amount here squared, equals a number, which means even though this is a binomial, we can go ahead and use the square root property. Square root property tells us that to solve this, we're going to first off just take the square root of both sides, but in the process we want to make sure that we include something very important. So this side will simplify to x plus 5 over 2. And this side, we will have the square root of this whole amount, but remember the square root of a fraction is the square root of the top, so square root of 37 over the square root of the bottom, 4. We can do that. And there's one important thing that I'm missing here. That's the key element to the square root property, this plus and minus. When you take the square root of both sides, you want to make sure you put that plus or minus in, because you don't get one amount, you get two separate amounts. We need them both in order to finish solving this problem. So now looking at it here, we want x by itself, which means I'm going to go ahead and subtract this 5 over 2 from both sides. Doing that, I'm going to end up with x equals minus 5 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 37 over, well, the square root of 4. 4 is a perfect square, so this becomes over 2. This is the second time we're going to have to deal with fractions, and you remember I said they go out of their way to be as convenient or user-friendly as possible? You notice here? I have a common denominator all set up for me. So in order to solve this problem, really all I have to do is go ahead and add and subtract the tops. So we end up with the final answer. x equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 37, that whole amount, over 2. And remember that we're writing it here together as one thing. This is two separate answers. Negative 5 plus the square root of 37 over 2, and negative 5 minus the square root of 37 over 2. That's it.